Alrighty, I know this has been a really tough um, video. We've had a lot to see, but uh, persevere. I know you can handle it. You got this. Okay, so we're just going to do three more questions together. These are our toughest questions. So if you need to rewatch this video multiple times, that's okay. Or if you need to Google any of these topics, you can Google, you know, solving exponential examples, solving logarithmic examples. You can specifically say using quadratic or uh, looking for e extraneous solutions. So Let's go ahead and do this. What is the quadratic? Uh, we know this as AX squared plus BX plus C is equal to zero. And then you're able to factor and finish this solve. So remember, that's the format that we're seeing. Hey, doesn't this kind of look like that? Something squared plus something minus a number is equal to zero. So what I can do is something we've done briefly elsewhere, and that's called that U substitution. This is a concept that will help you get through calculus in the future. But if I declare that U is equal to E to the X, then I can come back and rewrite this as U, because E to the X is U, but don't forget the squared, plus six times instead of e to the x u minus 16 equals zero. Hey, that's really easily factorable. That becomes u uh, plus eight times u minus two equals zero. Well, if I bring this back into both of these spots, I actually end up with e to the x plus eight times e to the x minus two equals zero. I can solve for both of those on each side. And then I take the natural log of both sides. If I take the natural log of both sides, I can actually see something occurring. So on this side, this becomes x equals the natural log of negative 8, and this becomes x equals the natural log of 2. But you should immediately know that the natural log of a negative number cannot be done. So my only answer is the natural log of 2. Again, use a calculator to confirm and you can use desmos.com. Next question. So in this one, again, we really do want to get it down to um, as simplified as possible. So in this particular instance, why not put these together since this is the product rule? So this becomes the natural log of x plus 2 times 3x minus 2 is equal to 2 natural log of 2x. Well, this 2 can be brought back up and made into 2 natural log of 2x squared. And this 2 becomes 2 natural log of 4x squared because this 2 becomes 2 squared and this is just x squared. On this side, I actually have to put these together. So x plus 2 and 3x minus 2 becomes 3x squared plus 6x uh, minus 2x minus 4, which ends up being the natural log of 3x squared uh, plus 4x minus 4. And oops, um, I got rid of this too. So why did I bring it down? My apologies. So now I have a natural log of something is equal to the natural log of something. That's a one-to-one -one that I've created. So I get to cancel out these natural logs. How nice and easy. And I end up with 3x squared plus 4x minus 4 equals 4x squared. I can solve that by bringing over the 4x squared on both sides. I end up with a negative x squared plus 4x minus 4 equals 0. Miss Jag personally prefers to bring it to the other side. Uh, it's just a personal preference. You can do it however you want, but this is, it just makes my life a little bit easier to not deal with a negative in front of my x. And this is 2, and this is 2, and they're going to both be negative. So my end answer is x is positive 2. And there's only one, so it's probably my answer, but of course I can confirm with a calculator. My final one uh, might be, some might say a little bit harder, but I personally don't think it's that much harder. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do the product rule right there. And so I end up with log base 12 of 12x times x minus 1 is equal to 2. This can be distributed, and that becomes log base 12 of 12x squared minus 12x equals 2. And now we have to figure out how this cancels. Log of x equals 3, you would have taken 10 from both sides because there's an invisible 10 right here. However, my base is not 10, so what am I actually going to take the base of both sides? I'm going to do to the, the 12 raised to the 12 raised to the. So I end up with 
12 to the power log base 12 of 12x 12 squared minus 12x equals 12 squared. All this cancels out. Be, oops. All this cancels out because we got nice and lucky and because we forced it to. And so I end up with 12x squared minus 12x equals 12 squared, which is 144. If I bring that over, I end up with a quadratic fum formula. And I can actually factor out a 12 if I wanted to. It might make my life easier, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I end up with this. So my answers are x equals uh, 4 and negative 3. But we have to confirm, so we check if 4 or negative 3 can undefine any of our logs. So if I test a log of 4 times 12, that's going to work. If I test log of 4 minus 1, that's going to work. So 4 should be a true statement. Log of 12 times negative 3, immediately this is undefined. That's not going to work. So this cannot be one of my answers. So my only answer is positive 4. And that would be extraneous solutions. Every single time you have to verify that your, your problem will not undefine the original log, a.k.a. log of 0 or log of a negative number. All righty, that's all I got for you guys. And that should be the end of our topic. So you will be doing a question on Moodle after this. But just a... Um, verification of everything we did in the previous videos. You know, we understood the properties. We used those to solve uh, and using simplification, expansion, condension. We recognize the one-to-one -one is our number one thing that we want to work towards. If we ever see a quadratic form, we can recognize it and use it. And anytime we have more than one answer, double check that any of your solutions are extraneous. So that's all I got for you guys. And that is the end of our video journal.